Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It is Wednesday night, and that means the patch notes came out early this morning, and since I am tied up at work all day, this is the time. I gotta do it now. So, it's Wednesday night. We're gonna do the patch notes. We're gonna go over them. We're gonna discuss them, everything that's entailed in them. It looks like it's gonna be a good one. Just know that um, by the time you're watching this, most of you, the patch will already be live. So here we go, here we go. This is over on the Eternal Evolution official Facebook page, as it always is. Dear Commanders, uh, blah, 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 Donkey Crunch, <laughs> blah, 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 500 diamonds. Okay, you know the deal. You're going to wake up tomorrow. For me, it is 3 a.m. Central Time when the patch gets pushed. Uh, and it is a new content cycle, meaning we're getting a new hero, even though the Ghost in the Shell collab event is still smack dab only completed week one. So it's just kind of, it's just kind of there. We can just kind of like go on and ignore that it's even there and everything else internal evolution is just kachunking, kachunking along like normal. So new hero and hero optimizations. We kind of discussed this guy in the sneak peek video, but here goes. I'm not going to read it all because his kit is out as well, and we're going to touch on that after this. So just know that it we are getting a new hero as of tomorrow. Take the God Whisperer. He's an SSS Atlas Energy hero, and we will discuss his kit a little bit when we go over his uh, his kit uh, on the Facebook page. So, and they are going to optimize Amat. I did discuss this as well. So, when they released Amat, her banner is going to be going away here in about, I don't know, seven hours. But, uh, apparently she was kind of bugged. You know, her, she did decent damage, but she wasn't uh, blowing anybody's socks off and impressing anybody. So, they are buffing her. They are buffing her survivability and her damage. So, added 30% uh, shield. Whoa. What was that? And fix the problem where her ultimate wasn't going off due to her passive. Optimize the special effects of a mod's ultimate skill to make it more obvious. So, you know, they kept typing up this huge alligator, this big alligator. And then we had to kind of squint to see it because it came up so fast. So they are going to make it more obvious when her ultimate skill goes off, I guess. Which is cool. You know, it should at least be like gobo size, right? Like monster, monster crocodile. New events and optimizations. Okay, now we're getting into the real meat and potatoes of this patch. So, new limit recruitment, that is for Take, Senway, and Omar. Senway, still good. We are using him currently in the Endless Battles to get as best a score as possible in the Summoner ones. The so Senway does have uses when they buff him for bonus points in PvE modes. Omar, Omar's not really good for anything. If you're a brand new player, you can get a little tiny bit of use out of Omar for Sincero Marsh, uh, but you're quickly going to replace him. You know, he's a he's a starting unit, definite starting unit. Uh, so 14 days is the take banner. Mirror of Reformation is up as usual. You know, this is always up the first week of a new hero release. And the rewards are take soul crystal nucleuses, Masrani's soul crystal nucleus, Cur the nucleus dust and astral recruitment cards. We all know how the mirror of reformation is set up now at this point where we are going to get you have to pull 300 300 it's it's horrible. I know you have to pull 300 to get that free copy of take. I'm not going to do that. I don't think the majority of you that's that's whale territory. I'm going to pull 180. I think that's going to ensure that I get the last Masrani Awakening Crystal, which is really... I'm more excited for getting Masrani Awakened than for getting Take, although Take does look pretty good. So, you know, that's kind of the rule of thumb there. It's either 180 or 300, roughly, if you have, if you've been saving. But I know that's tough for most people. So, Mirror of Reformation is only 7 days. I think they should make that 14 days, but oh well. Gamuzo's Bell is coming out. Uh, you can get Take. Uh, a Masrani Soul Crystal Nucleus, and then you can get the Solar Flare. Solar Flare is the energy red prototype that came with the game at launch. It is a pretty decent damage type prototype, but the book of the Cosmos Lords, or notes of the Cosmos Lord, the other energy prototype, is much, much better. This one, you know, can hold you off until you get the other one kind of leveled up a bit. I think it needs to be up to at least level 4 for the book to become viable over a higher uh, level solar flare. 
Seven days, as always, details gathering. That is the event that is tied to Gozo's Bell that gives us the gears to spin the bell. Right? And what are we going to get here? Rakana. Rakana, that's okay. That's good for, for starting players. You know, Rakana still has some uses, although her days are numbered. Uh, seven days as well. Project Premium Development, we are not going to discuss. That is pretty bad. And then a new Galactic Bounty event will open on some servers. Their main rewards are Miranda. Why are they giving us Miranda? Because they are pushing energy content, a.k.a. Solar Flare, a.k.a. Take. And Miranda is the support for energy. She's also the support for Hunters, but unless you have an Artemis, you're probably going to want to stick your Miranda with your energy team, given all of the bonuses that she gives out energy heroes under her bubble. Uh, 11 days. I'm not going to guess. I always screw up what Galactic Bounty is. I do believe that is going to be the one which is three lines. And you can you gotta fill in the middle line is Miranda, top line is advanced cards, bottom line is limited recruitments, then you get other rewards when you're going uh vertically. I think that's what that is. Don't quote me on that. I always screw it up. I always screw it up, but it's free stuff. It is free stuff, so go get your free stuff. All you have to do, if that is the correct one that I'm thinking of, is you have to do certain tasks during the day in order to fulfill your quests. In fact, I'm thinking quests, bounty. I'm probably right. That's probably the one it is. You got to go do some certain tasks, which are going to let you do three a day to get some stuff. So all free stuff. I think it's 15 limited cards, which is, which is decent. Twilight Lands is opening. Now, you notice, or I have read the patch notes, and I did notice that there is no mention of the changes to Twilight Lands scoring. Meaning, we're not going to get that piece of content, which is pretty much going to be the last thing from their uh, Q1 roadmap. We're not going to get that until the Twilight Lands opens in March, because we're going to get the first two weeks of February. is Twilight Lands, the Endless Battle, and then the next Twilight Lands is the first two weeks of March. So... So, for now, this Twilight Lands is exactly how you've been playing it for the last year. <laughs> well, eight months or so. A new Astral Rebates event. Okay. Will open on all servers. You can spend a total of a certain amount of Astral Coupons to earn rewards. Now, this is a pure pay-to-win event. Free-to-play are not going to be able to touch this because the Astral Coupons... Are they're trying to incentivize you to purchase them which will bypass the Apple store or whatever store you have to go to their own website in order to purchase these things you can buy them in game but you'll get your biggest rebates if you purchase them on their website and by doing that they make more money but I think they give you a 15% deal needless to say this is a pure spend uh, event much like premium development and as such I am always going to ignore this since uh, I'm trying to limit my spending uh, on mobile games uh, now uh, in 2024. Uh, I just uh, ran the numbers so I did I spent about $193 in January but that was also split up in between Devil May Cry when I was trying out that game and Eternal Evolution and I do believe the majority of it went into Devil May Cry so February I'm not going to spend a whole lot of anything. So I'm definitely not going to spend on these. And I, I wonder what the rewards are going to be. Um, I'm assuming they're going to try to incentivize us quite heavily to purchase these. But don't do it. There is stuff in this game that is worth it for spending. These aren't it. Uh, in my opinion, the yearly pass, the weekly passes, and maybe the monthly pass are pretty much what you want to spend on in this game. That's that's pretty much it. If you if you need the limited recruitment cards, then there's the I think it's the wasteland pass. Don't quote me on that. That's also a good value for your dollar. You know, if you you know have a entertainment budget, you can spend on mobile gaming. So yeah, astral rebate event. No, nope, nope, nope. Not gonna do it. Not gonna touch it. Okay, game content adjustments and optimizations. This is exciting. We are getting a new game mode. Yes, you heard that correctly. We are getting a new game mode so they didn't say anything about this they just said in their q1 roadmap that they were going to make awakening materials more easily accessible for free to play in a new 
event. I don't think they said game mode. They said event, and then that event would be permanent. I didn't actually think it was going to be this. I thought it was the mysterious gift, which we have in game right now, since that was also a way for free to play to get awakening materials. But no, we are actually getting on top of the mysterious gift event, which is good for free to play and spenders. We're also getting this, this new game mode, Exotic Expeditions. We're getting Guild Expedition, Exotic Expedition. We still have Guild vs. Guild coming out that's probably going to be in March. Exotic Expedition will be available after you pass Story Stage 2040, which is very easy to do. In Exotic Expedition, uh, you need to defeat more bosses and compete with other commanders to see who can reach the most Expedition rounds to gain great rewards, such as... Chaos, Soul, Crystal, Nucleus, those are the generalized ones, those are the ones we want. And then Alternate World Coins and more. If you don't know what Alternate World Coins is, that's just going to be the virtual training room currency that you're using. So you get enough currency right now, I do believe it is 30, to buy three Daniel Awakening Crystal Shards each day. They are switching up the currency and they're calling it now the Alternate World coins and i do believe it's not going to be virtual training room it's also going to be the alternate world and i do believe it explains that later on in this in this uh in this note so once the battle begins all commanders will start around one each round consists of four bosses uh, to progress you must defeat all of the bosses on that round so you got to defeat all four bosses and then advance to the next one with each round the boss's level and difficulty will increase. Additionally, the same types of bosses will appear within every round. So the same bosses each round for whatever bosses they have allocated to it for this month. And I, there is a, another separate post specifically for Exotic Expedition. And it looks like it's a, it's a season much like Hell Arena. So it's not just one week and you're done. It looks like it, um, it spans... Well, you know what? Let's go look. I want you guys to know all the information, so we are going to give it to you. So here it is. Uh, where? I guess I got to go view post. Okay, so if we look at the pictures, can you see this? I got to move my head a little bit. Here we go. So you see Exotic Expedition, current week one, so it's starting. Now, it says that the offense ends in two days, 20 hours, so three days, but you can see the remaining season time it says starts February 1st, which is tomorrow, and goes till March 28th. So it actually goes for two months. And it does say season. So there's going to be a whole season of this. You can see that it is a lot like Endless Battles. So this is, uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be like round one. It says week one. And these are the four bosses, Amat, Panda, uh, the Vanguard boss. And then I don't know what this guy over here is. We can actually blow this up a little bit. Uh, or maybe not. Maybe not. We'll go back. And you can see it is it is a lot like Endless Battles where the, you're going to get bonus heroes. Obviously, they want you to spend on Maserati Awakening. This one right here is Take. And then Artemis, go shoot myself. Arcadia, Taylor, and Serena because we really want to use Serena. So this looks like a, a Hunter slash Energy slash use Maserati to beat it. Now, this is going to be a lot like Endless Battles, where you're going up against probably everyone that is in your Endless Battle. and But it's going to last a long time. It's going to last a long time. But we will see the all of the specifics tomorrow once it launches. All right. Now, how do I... How do I go back? Okay. Close that. And now i got to find my place again. Okay. So that is what Exotic Expedition is. It is basically a solo uh, expedition mode. Like, whereas uh, Guild vs. Expedition was for your guild, Guild Hunt is for your guild. This event is a solo mode. It's just a little bit more expansive. So, if it lasts two months, once you get up to the higher rounds, it's really going to... It's going to be a lot like Twilight Lands was that one season or that one time when... Every day, you, it was unbeatable, and you just went in and did as much damage as possible. This is going to be probably the same same way, because once you get up to a certain level in uh, in that mode or in Exotic Expedition, you're not going to be able to beat it every day. You're going to have to like chip away at all the bosses and then come back the next day. It's going to remain the HP that's left. You're just going to have to keep pushing, keep grinding. What that means is that every day, your max effort is going to matter in the long run when I'm assuming there's a settlement time and there's a bigger reward when the event ends. 
So very, very cool. Uh, that is something else to do in the day. Whoop, my little my little fidget thing just fell on my keyboard. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for it. So that's, oh yeah, right here, settlement time. Okay, I should have read that. Each round of exotic expedition will be settled at server time, 5 a.m. on Thursday and Sunday. Okay, so let's see. So Sunday, so then we got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So there's four days. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, okay, so that's kind of odd times. So each round, but it says up here, everyone starts at round one. So you can only really do round one. You Oh, okay, so you got, we're gonna have, since this is gonna launch on a Thursday, you're gonna have all of Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because it's gonna reset, or you're gonna get paid out on, on Sunday morning. So you're gonna have three days to be able to pick away at this first round, exhibition round one, and then it's gonna proceed, right? And it looks like uh, each round is gonna last either three or four days, depending on you know what day of the week it is. And we're gonna have up until, like I said, March 28th to see how far we can get. You guys can run the math. If that's, say, if that's roughly eight weeks and we get two rounds a week, then we're gonna get up to 16 rounds in total. All right, cool, new game mode, I like it. Optimized guild technology. This is not guild commander tech or sorry commander tech. This is guild tech I I me on my main account just recently maxed out and finished Completely my guild technology trees all of them all done um, I wish I would have known this was coming because then maybe I wouldn't have spent um, some uh, points in resist on everybody and I uh, would have saved it, would have saved my resources and put it back into Assassins, who I'm probably going to start with first because Assassins are my best team and they do the most for my account. So it's going up to 50 now. We are currently at 25. So they're effectively just doubling it, which is uh, basically just extending the relevance of Guild Hunt because I think that they knew that most people that were old, old, old veteran players that were clearing Guild Hunt uh, twice a week, right through 18, were done and didn't have anything to do on this. And, you know, you don't want your old veteran players, your, you know, your spenders that are stick around to be like, well, there's nothing for me to do anymore. I'm just going to quit. So they are trying to extend the lifespan of Guild Hunt by increasing the cap of Guild Technology System. Uh, optimized Ancient Altar added a sweep function. Okay, fine. That's fine. But I don't care. It takes five minutes. Cool. Now I don't have to do Ancient Altar, but you know what I would like to do? More levels. And I'm not going to harp on that anymore. I'm just going to say that and leave it as, at that. Optimize the equipment system. Equipment system. So optimize the drops of the smelting system. Increased the drop probability and slightly increased the effective equipment output. What they're doing is, and they did say smelting. So when you smelt gear now, you're going to have an increased probability of getting good relevant gear. Optimize the experience of upgrading the secondary attributes of the legendary equipment of Disa Caves and Katosian Triangle. What does that mean? Okay, so what that means, that's per, that's basically all the places where you can get gear. Well, it's not all the places, but it's, it's the vast majority of the ways you can get gear. So what they're doing is they are uh, they're going to increase the chances, say, for like a sudden signet piece to roll crit rate, crit damage, attack substat. So right now, we've we've all been through it where we roll triple resist or triple defense because those substats are weighted higher. The probabilities of rolling them are higher than the more relevant ones, which means you just got to roll a crap ton of gear. Well, well now... They're going to uh, increase the probability of actually getting the substats you want on the gear that you want to roll. So that's cool. That's good. So uh, hopefully no one, uh, you know, r s blew their uh, Disa Caves stamina stash or their Katosian Triangle stash. Adjusted virtual training system. So this is what I was talking about earlier. So they're renaming it, the virtual training shop, to the alternate world shop. And they renamed... The virtual training coins to alternate world coins those are the currency you're going to get from the new uh exotic expedition 
which you can now use those coins, those extra, that extra currency to purchase more awakening materials from that shop. Because for now, or up till now, it was taking 20 days to get one whole crystal. Now, we don't know the rate at which this is going to increase our farming of awakening crystals, but we'll know come tomorrow once we can see everything. So that's cool. And then bugs. Let's see. Is there anything decent in here? Fix an issue where the damage bonus would be displayed incorrectly after using combat amplifiers. Don't really care. Fix the issue where Masrani's excess exclusive soul crystals were not being dismissed. That's that's cracking problems. Fix an issue of an incorrect incorrect description of flying thunder skill in some levels of Mirage space. Don't care. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the patch notes. Um. Pretty much the, the TLDR is we are getting Take, we are getting uh, Twilight Lands coming back, we are getting a brand new game mode, which is basically a solo version. Basically, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a guild expedition solo style. That's it. That's all it is. But it is going to be a progressive. So just think it's it's basically <clears throat> it's basically exactly like guild expedition, except you're by yourself competing against everyone that's going to be probably in your endless battle cluster, which means I have stiff competition. Uh, because if we just go to the game, let's just see if I'm still in first. So, yes. By, again, 500,000 points. So, uh, me and Mad Bashar are now arch rivals when it comes to PvE content because uh, he definitely pushed me. He definitely pushed me to get every little ounce at Endless Battles, and I can only assume that these are going to be your groupings when it comes to Exotic Expedition. Although I did hear a rumor, or I did hear a statement from somebody in my Discord, I think it was a mod, that said it was server-based. So I take that back. Uh, it could be server-based. We'll find out tomorrow when it goes live, but it could very well be server-based. So you go back to, if you have a dead server, congratulations, you win. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it. That's all. That's the patch notes. The patch is going live tomorrow. We actually got a lot coming tomorrow. Um, one other thing to note is that as of next Wednesday, so a week from today at the time of me recording this, uh, the dev team is gone until the 19th. It is their, I think they said the spring something, some holiday, some two-week holiday. So they're going to be gone. So don't expect everything that they have in-game is going to be loaded up and pre-planned so they can just push the button and go. Uh, we've seen that before when they've gone on holidays is they just, I think they did it during the first collab where they just hit a button. There was no patch notes, nothing. There was even not even anything to download. They just pushed it and it went. So we'll see. Maybe they'll have somebody back at the office that they've designated has to stay and work, but... Just let you guys know that the majority of the team, the majority of the dev team, the CC reps, everything, they're going to be on holiday from this upcoming Wednesday till the 19th of February. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap it up there. If you've made it to the end of this uh, video, oh, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Darth Vader, because I'm looking at a Darth Vader head on my desk. So if you made it to the end of this video, not a long one, 23 minutes, put Darth Vader down in the comment section below. I will know you made it to the end of this video and I will thank you profusely. Till next time, ladies and gentlemen, cheers, peace, bye-bye.